Okay, Calc students. Um, this is still section 2.7. My previous video went over the concept of derivatives and velocity and slope um, and using the PowerPoint slides, kind of notes over the section, if you will. This is going over some of the practice problems, okay? So I hope this is beneficial to you. Um, I knew I was going to need a bigger workspace, so um, I used my snipping tool and put some of the problems from WebAssign into my SmartBoard notebook so that I could have as much white space as possible. We've got a lot of limits to solve on these, so you are going to need some space. Um, so this is problem number one. Consider the parabola y equals 5x minus x squared. Find the slope of the tangent line to the parabola at the point 1, 4. Now, from our first definition, I just want to say your slope, if you remember from definition one in the PowerPoint slides, is m equals the limit as x approaches a, this was the first definition we had for slope, is f of x minus f of a, okay, that's your difference in your y values, over x minus a. That's the difference in your x values. For some reason I kind of wrote that up above the limit a little bit, but that's all right. So that's our definition of slope. Okay, so we're going to use that now. So our slope, okay, our m is going to be the limit as x approaches a. Again, f of x minus f of a, I'll write it one more time, over x minus a for us. That is the limit as x approaches 1, okay, 1 because that's my x value in my ordered pair that we're supposed to be finding this, the um, tangent line at that point of, now my function is f of x minus x squared, okay, minus f of a, okay, f of a is 4, um, over x minus 1. So my a here is 4. Why is my a 4? Because this is my a, okay? And my a is actually 1, but f of a is 4. So this is my f of 1, right? That's your y value at the point 1. So that's where that's coming from. So we kind of use the generic x for the f of x, and we use the actual y value for the f of a. OK? Um, so let's keep going here. This then is the limit as x approaches 1 of, I'm going to kind of string all this together. I'm going to pull the negative outside. Um, negative x squared, this would give me a negative 5x then plus 4. I just factored the negative out of the top, okay, over x minus 1. Now, why would I do that? Because that will actually factor. So this factors to x minus 1 x minus 4, okay, you all see that? So then my x minus 1s are going to cancel, okay? So then I'm going to come back here for some more room, start my second row here. So then this is the limit as x approaches 1. What's left is minus x minus 4, okay, which is, if I plug in 1, of course, that's negative 1 minus 4, negative negative 3, or just positive 3. So positive 3 is my slope. So finding the slope, that's my first answer. Okay, so my slope is 3. Now find the equation of the tangent line. 
Okay, equation of the tangent line. Remember your point slope formula. Okay, point slope formula, if you remember, is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. That's your point slope formula. So we're going to plug in. Okay, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. This is my m. Okay, my x1 and y1. Okay, those are my point coordinates. Well, what was the point coordinates they asked us to use in the first part? It was the point one, four. So this is a one, this is a four, and of course we already knew that the slope was three. So if I solve this, then I've got y minus four equals three times x minus one, which gives me y minus four equals 3x minus 3. Move the 4 over, sorry, the negative 4, if you will. So we have 3x plus 1. That is the answer to the second part. That is the equation of the tangent line. Okay, so y equals 3x plus 1. Okay, I hope that was beneficial. All right, to go over those. I'm not going to, the third part, part C is a graph. You all can figure that out. Um, second question, find the equation of the tangent line to the curve at the given point. Okay, equation of the tangent line to the curve at the given point. Once again, slope is the limit as x approaches a of f of x minus f of a over x minus a. Again, definition of limit from definition one from this section in the book, from the PowerPoint slides. Okay, so we have to plug in for us what that is. So m equals the limit as x approaches 81. Now, how did I get the 81? Okay, that's my x, or actually that's my a, that's what we are approaching, okay? Um, and that is then root x minus root 81 over x minus 81. So f of x is root x, f of a, if 81 is my a, that's root of 81. So obviously, this is limit as x approaches 81 of root x minus 9 over x minus 81. Now, here's where it gets a little, I don't know if I want to use the word weird, but um, I kind of noticed that root x squared is x and 9 squared is 81. So I'm trying to find a way to manipulate this expression so that I can cancel out the denominator. Okay. Um, so the only way that kind of presents itself to me, if you will, is if I multiply the top and the bottom by root x plus 9 the conjugate of the top. Okay, now why would I want it to be the conjugate of the top? Because remember, if I multiply a binomial times its conjugate, then all I'm really multiplying is the first two terms and the last two terms. And that's going to give me an x minus 81 that'll cancel with the bottom. So yes, I've made the bottom a little uglier in the process, but I'm going to be able then to cancel out the x minus 81. And that's what I need to cancel because if I put the 81 in for x right now, this goes to zero, and that's what I can't have. Okay, so I'm trying to find a way to manipulate it so that I can cancel the x minus 81 so that it does not go to zero as I, my limit approaches 81. Okay, so let me keep going. This is the limit as x approaches 81 of, now on top I've got x minus 81. And on bottom, I've got x minus 81 times root x plus 9. 
Well, again, what's nice about this is, of course, those cancel. Okay, now let me keep going over here, second row. Okay, so this is now the limit as x approaches 81 of 1 over root x plus 9. Okay, well, now if we plug an 81 in, that totally works. Now if I plug in an 81, root of 81 is 9. So this is going to equal 1 over root 81 plus 9, which is 1 over 9 plus 9, or 1 18th. That is my slope. Now, they didn't just ask for slope, did they? This right here is my m. That's my slope. They asked for the equation of the line. So again, we need to use the point-slope formula. Okay, point-slope formula. This goes in for m, and then this up here, my point goes in for my x1, y1. So my m would be 1 18th, my x1 would be 81, my y1 would be 9, okay, using the point slope formula. So this becomes y minus 9 equals 1 18th times x minus 81. Um, distribute the 118th, yada, yada, yada. I'm actually going to forge ahead here. This is y equals 118th x plus 9 halves. If you take 118th times negative 81 and then add 9 to move the 9 to the right side, this is what you end up with. This is the equation of the line that is tangent to the curve. Okay? So, 1 18th x plus 9 halves. Okay, I hope that was helpful. All right, now again, we get to have more limit fun here on this one. So, two parts here. Find the slope m of the tangent to the curve y equals 4 plus 5x squared minus 2x cubed at a point where x equals a. So now we're going to kind of change and use a different um, definition of our slope, if you will. Okay. So for this one, we are going to use the fact that m equals, since they want it where x equals a, um, we're going to use the definition with h. So as h approaches 0, this is the one that is really more suited to the um, title of derivative, if you will. So f of a plus h minus f of a all over h. Now, if you remember from my previous video, h is the distance between x and a. Okay, if you remember from the first video from this section. So h is the difference from x minus a. So as x approaches a, h is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. Okay, so that's why our limit is as h goes to zero. Okay, so that's the definition for limit we're going to use here for part a. So doing that, then our slope is the limit as h approaches zero of Okay, so first of all, this a plus h is going in both of the x's here in my function. Okay, that's where my a plus h and my a are going in. So this is going to get long and drawn out, but it's not hard. Okay, so back to this. So this is the limit of 4 plus 5 times a plus h squared minus 2 a plus h cubed minus okay now we are subtracting the entire f of a function so i'm just putting a in place of x so 4 plus 5 a squared minus 2 a cubed 
all of that over H. Okay, now um, I'm going to use that. I don't know how many of you all remember the binomial theorem. Okay, for expansion, let me see if I can kind of do this about A plus H squared is A squared plus 2AH plus H squared. A plus H cubed, if you all remember binomial expansion, this is A cubed plus 3A squared H plus 3AH squared plus H cubed. Okay, so we have to distribute a 5 to those and a negative 2 to the second set that's cubed. So again, that A plus H squared and A plus H cubed, you either have to like foil it out, multiply it out, or use the binomial theorem for expansion. Okay, so this gives me the limit as H approaches 0 of 4 plus 5a squared plus 10ah plus 5h squared minus 2a cubed minus 6a squared h minus 6ah squared minus 2h cubed. Okay, now that was just distributing this 5 and this negative 2 through. Okay, now I'm going to distribute the negative through for the last part of this. So then minus 4 minus 5a squared plus 2a cubed. Holy cow, all of this over h. Wow, I cannot draw a straight line, but you all get the idea. Woo! Okay, so thankfully a lot of this crap cancels. Okay, so my negative 4 cancels with my positive 4. Um, my negative 5a squared cancels with positive 5a squared. Um, 2a cubed cancels with a negative 2a cubed. Um, do I have anything else that cancels? I don't think so. So what are we left with? So we are left with the limit as h approaches 0 of... 10AH plus 5H squared minus 6A squared H minus 6AH squared minus 2H cubed all over H. Now, I can factor an H out of all of those. Okay? So I'm, I'm going to kind of cheat here and do it without. So this H will actually cancel with this one, one of those, that one, one of those, and two of the, or sorry, one of those to leave you with two. You guys okay with that? So that leaves us with the limit as H approaches zero of 10A plus 5h, and actually I need to put it right beside it because now we no longer have a denominator. So 10a plus 5h minus 6a squared minus 6a h minus 2h squared. Okay, so we have the limit, I should probably put parentheses, of this whole thing. Now, this is as h approaches 0. So imagine now if I came in here and put a 0 in all of these terms that have an h. Okay, that's going to zero them out, right? So what I'm going to be left with then is just 10a minus 6a squared. Okay, 10a minus 6a squared. Ooh, okay, so what did they want? Find the slope m of the tangent at the point where x equals a. So we did that. 10a minus 6a squared. That's what would go in there. Okay, 
they want it, they want it generalized where x equals a. Okay, that's what we did. Now find the equations of the tangent lines at the points 1, 7, and 2, 8. Okay, so first let's do the 1, 7. Okay. So at the point 1, 7, they want us to find the equation of the tangent line. Well, this is our m, right? So now we have to plug in a 1 for our a. So this becomes our a, right? So our m is 10 times 1 minus 6 times 1 squared which 10 minus 6 is 4. That's our slope. Okay, now we have to use the point-slope formula. Okay, so remember, point-slope formula, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. This is 4. I just found that. Okay, this is my ordered pair. So this is 1, this is 7. Okay, that's the point that we're trying to find, the tangent at. So we've got y minus 7 equals 4, parentheses, x minus 1. So y minus 7 equals 4x minus 4. y equals 4x plus 3, if I add the 7 and move it over. So that's the equation of my first tangent line. So what did I get? 4x plus 3. Okay, and they want the second one to be at the point 2, 8. Okay, oh, I'm almost out of room. You know what? I'm leaving that one to you guys. So 2, 8, they also want the tangent line. Go through the same steps. Okay, this would be your A. So first you find M. Okay, so your m, you go back to the 10a minus 6a squared. So 10 times 2 minus 6 times 2 squared. Okay, that's going to give you, if you do that math, you should get, what, negative 4? Okay, and then use the point-slope formula with the slope of negative 4 and the point 2, 8. Okay, Woo. let's keep moving. These aren't necessarily hard, they're just labor intensive. Um, this is number, what is this, number four? Yeah. If a ball is thrown into the air with a velocity of 36 feet per second, its height in feet after t seconds is given by y equals 36t minus 16t squared. That is what we call the position function. If you remember, we talked about position function um, when we went over the slides. So the position function, S of t, is 36t minus 16t squared. If you also remember um, that example we did with the PowerPoint slide, uh, we dropped a ball from the CN tower, and its motion equation was like negative 4.9 t squared. And I said, that's pretty typical. When you're talking meters, it's negative 4.9 t squared. If we were talking feet, it's negative 16 t squared. And that's exactly what we have here. Just wanted to point that out in case you all remembered me saying that. So we have to find the velocity. Now, if you remember, velocity, same thing as slope, okay? So we have to find the velocity at point one. That's what they're looking for. Find the velocity when t equals one. So the velocity at one is, let's define it here, the limit as t approaches one of s of t minus s of one over t minus 1. Okay, we're back to that first definition of slope. So s of t 
is, of course, let me keep going here. Limit as t approaches 1. We've got 36 t minus 16 t squared minus s of 1. If I plug a 1 into the s function, um, I just get 36 minus 16, which is 20. All over t minus 1. Now, let me kind of rearrange this. I'm going to go down a line here. So the limit as t approaches 1 of, if I had negative 16 t squared plus 36 t minus 20 all over t minus 1. Now what I'm looking to do is factor that top. I'm trying to get the t minus 1s to cancel. Why? Because if I plug a 1 in for t right now, the denominator is going to go to 0, and I can't have that. So I'm trying to find a way to cancel out the t minus 1 on bottom. So this is limit as t approaches 1 of, if I first factor out a negative 4, I'm going to have 4t squared minus 9t plus 5, okay, all over t minus 1. Now, to save me doing another step, I'm going to kind of factor this above. Okay, this is going to factor to t minus 1 and then 4t minus 5. Then, so that's what this thing factors to. Then my t minus 1s will cancel. Okay, so then what I'm left with is the limit as t approaches 1 of negative 4 times 4t minus 5. Okay, well, if I plug that in, if I plug in 1 for t, okay, that gives me negative 4, 4 times 1 minus 5, negative 4 times negative 1, which is positive 4. 4 feet per second is the velocity at the point 1. So this would be 4. Okay, 4 feet per second. I hope that was helpful. Now, Let's look at problem number five. I'm not going to do all of these, but as I was looking through them, I tried to pick problems that I thought kind of got the ball rolling, if you will. Um, so number five. If f of x equals 6x squared minus x cubed, find f prime of 1, or the derivative of f at 1. Okay, f prime of 1, or the derivative of f at 1, and use it to find an equation of the tangent line to the curve 6x squared minus x cubed at point 1, 5. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is find the derivative at point 1. Then we plug it in to find the equation of the tangent line, and I'll probably leave that second point or second step to you guys. But let's first talk derivative, okay? So f prime of 1, the derivative of f at point 1, equals, now we're back to the, the definition where we've got h approaching 0, okay? So this is as x gets really close to a. h, again, is the difference or the distance between x and a. Um, so we have f of 1 plus h minus f of 1, again, difference in your y, change in your y position over change in your x position. Again, if h is the difference between x and a, that's just, this would be like x minus 1 kind of thing. Um, okay, so f of 1 plus h minus f of 1 all over h. Again, this is as h approaches 0, as that difference gets smaller and smaller. So this gives us we are literally going to plug in the 1 plus h in for both of our x coordinates in the value of the, or in the definition of the function, okay? So, limit, 
again, as h approaches zero, on top, I'm going to use some square brackets here to differentiate. I've got 6 parentheses 1 plus h squared minus 1 plus h cubed. All over, oh, sorry, not done. Minus, <laughs> sorry, f of 1. Well, f of 1, okay, is the number 5. This is f of 1. If we plug 1 in for x, what's the value of the function equal? It equals 5, right? So this is minus 5. That's where that comes from, okay? All over h. So we have some multiplying out to do here. Again, we have to expand those binomials, okay? So again, none of this work is hard. It's just kind of labor intensive. So the limit as h approaches 0, we have 6 plus 12h plus 6 h squared, sorry, I want to remind you, I kind of did some of this in my head. So this would be 1 plus 2h plus h squared if you foiled that out. And again, the second part, if you use, if you foiled the first step and then multiplied the second step, or if you use binomial expansion, whatever, you would get 1 plus 3h squared plus 3, sorry, h cubed. Oh, Amy, you're screwing this up. Okay. Oh, hello. What did I just do there? I'm not sure what I did. I went to erase. Okay, let me back up. <laughs> I apologize. So we would have this, if we expand it, is 1 plus 3h plus 3h squared plus h cubed, if you expanded that, okay? So now I'm just kind of combining everything together. Um, this next line. So minus 1 plus 3h plus 3h squared plus h cubed minus 5, again, all over h. Now, um, let's see what all we can kind of combine here. Um, so I'm going to kind of go ahead to save a few steps and combine what I can kind of in my head. Um, let's see, my h's, first of all, my 6's are going to cancel. Do you see that? A positive 6 with a negative 1 minus 5. So negative 1 minus 5 would give me negative 6. That's going to cancel. So then my h is, I'm going to have a 12h minus 3h. So that's going to give me a 9h. Okay. Plus 6h squared minus 3. Because remember, I keep saying minus. Remember, this negative has to be distributed to all of these. Right. So this would give me a plus 3h squared and then a minus h cubed all over h. Now again, I'm going to kind of save a step here. I hope you guys don't mind. This h will cancel with that one, cancel with one of them, cancel with one of those, and leave me with two. So what I'm left with is limit as h approaches 0 of 9 plus 3h minus h squared. Now, if we plug in zeros, okay, as h approaches zero, if I plug in zero here and here, that just leaves me with nine. Boy, that was a lot of work for just the number nine. So this is our slope, okay? Um, then they want the equation of the tangent line. So I will leave that to you. The equation of the tangent line, remember, you're plugging it in the point-slope formula. y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Okay, so again, this becomes my 9. x1 is 1, y1 is 5, because they wanted it at the point 1, 5. Okay, enough of that. Woo!
Um, next one, find f prime of a. So now we, we're not trying to find it at a specific point. We're actually just trying to find kind of generically with a. Okay, so um, again, f prime of a is the limit as h approaches zero of f of a plus h minus f of a all over h. Okay, so I may not finish this one. I may just kind of get you guys going. So f of a plus h, you're plugging a plus h in place of x. So this is three times a plus h squared minus five a plus h plus one minus, okay, f of a, we're just plugging in a now, 3a squared minus 5a plus 1 all over h. Okay, so I should have maybe, so this is the f of a plus h. This part, the second part is the f of a and then all over h. So again, you need to expand here. This would be a squared plus 2ah plus h squared if you foiled that out. So I will do one more step and then I'm going to leave you to it to simplify. So the limit as h approaches 0 of 3a squared plus 6ah plus 3h squared minus 5a minus 5h plus 1 minus 3a squared plus 5a minus 1 all over h. Okay, I'm going to leave the rest of it to you so you guys can finish. Simplify your terms up top cancel out an h because you've got an h on bottom so cancel an h out of every remaining term and then you can find the derivative of f at a okay um moving along number seven again may not finish it may just get you started on it so find f prime of a. Now this one's a little trickier only because now we have a numerator and a denominator, so it's gonna look a little uglier, okay? So again, f prime of a equals the limit as h approaches zero, f of a plus h minus f of a all over h, okay? So, now again, this is going to get a little ugly because we've got, we're going to end up with like a ugly complex fraction here. The limit as h approaches zero of f of a plus h, okay? f of a plus h is two times a plus h plus 16 all over a plus h plus 9 minus f of a is 2a plus 16 over a plus 9 all over h. Ooh. Okay, so now, <laughs> um, let me move down here for some more room. Limit as h approaches zero, um, f of a plus h is 2a plus 2h plus 16 over a plus h plus 9 minus 2a 
plus 16 over just a plus 9. And again, that whole thing over h. Now, we've got to combine the fractions on top. We've got to get common denominators. So yay us. So these are their own factors. So this numerator has to be multiplied by a plus 9. This numerator has to be multiplied by a plus h plus 9. Holy guacamole. Okay, so again, this isn't necessarily hard, but it is ugly and labor intensive. So we have, whoo, um, let me just, for the sake of, we're going to have 2a plus 2h plus 16 times a plus 9 minus 2a plus 16 times a plus h plus 9 all over I'm going to go ahead and, and move those denominators like if we are dividing by h we are multiplying by 1 over h so I'm going to go ahead and, and um, reduce my complex fraction here to h times a plus h plus 9 times a plus 9. Woohoo. Okay. Good times. Um, so I've got to do a bunch of expanding out here on my um, numerator. So the limit as h approaches 0 up. If I FOIL all of that out, wow, I end up with 2a squared plus 18a plus 2ah plus 18h plus 16a plus 144. Um, I'm going to go ahead and multiply the second one out as well and distribute the negative while I'm going. So minus, actually maybe not. I'm going to leave the minus out front. We can see it maybe a little easier. 2a squared plus 2ah plus 18a plus 16a plus 16h plus 144 <laughs> all over h a plus h plus 9 a plus 9 wow okay so now you guys i'm going to let you all finish it yep um i'm going to let you finish so go ahead and simplify what you can on the top. You'll be surprised, maybe, at all of the things that are going to cancel. Um, so there's a lot that are going to cancel. A lot, a lot. You should be left with one term on top with your denominator. Okay? And then I will let you finish. Okay. Um, I'm... Last one, quickly. <laughs> I'm already up to almost 45 minutes. Okay. They want particle moves in a straight line with equation of motion S equals F of T, where S is measured in meters and T in seconds. Find the velocity and speed where T equals 2. So essentially, we are supposed to find the velocity of 2, which is the same thing as F prime of 2. Okay, velocity is the same thing as the first derivative, and we're finding it at the point 2. So if we use the point 2, um, we don't have to find it kind of generically and then put in a 2. We can actually use the 2 in our calculations, and it makes it maybe a little easier. But the limit as h approaches 0 of f of 2 plus h 
minus f of 2 all over h. Okay, so this is going to be the limit as h approaches 0 of um, 140 plus 20 2 plus h minus 4.5 2 plus h squared okay minus oh boy i hope i don't run out of room here 140 plus 20 times 2 minus 4.5 times 2 squared okay so moving down here this is the limit as h approaches 0 of if i expand all that out okay remember if i expand this out this is 4 plus 4h plus h squared right so this is going to give me limit as h approaches 0 of 140 plus 40 plus 20h minus 4.5h squared minus 18h minus 18 minus 140 plus 40 minus 18 all over h okay um i think i wrote all that down correctly as i distribute and okay um i think i'm going to stop there and let you guys finish it yep so i'm going to stop there let you finish it okay Combine like terms, cancel out your h when it's left, and then put 0 in for h for the limit to evaluate it. Now, I want to remind you, though, the difference between velocity and speed. Okay? One thing I want to point out, speed is the absolute value of velocity, if you remember from our PowerPoint lecture, the previous one here from 2.7. Speed is the absolute value of velocity. Okay, so if you get a positive answer for velocity, speed's just going to be the same exact answer. If you get a negative, like if you got a negative 8 for velocity, speed would be a positive 8. Okay? All right, that should help you on your homework from 2 7. I know this is a big section, but this is kind of the turning point here for the first semester of calc. Derivatives are the big topic for semester one calculus. So hope that helps.